Hey guys, it's Michaela Nicole. Welcome back to my channel. This is a video that is gonna be a lot different than my normal videos. And by normal videos, I mean like the food review. Those are more of just like a satirical thing for me and my sister, but I would really like to start doing some videos on things that are like really interesting to me. Um, so things like collecting things and cameras and things of that sort. So. Today's video is gonna be the first of maybe a series if you guys like it or if people want to watch it because I've noticed that a lot of YouTube videos, if you look up like camera restoration, tend to be like someone trekking out into the woods and finding a camera that's covered in mud um, and when they clean it up, it just all washes off because they put it there and went back to get it. It's not really like finding an old camera in a lake and restoring it. So some of the videos I wanna start doing are restoration videos where I take my old cameras that I collect that I've gotten from antique stores or family or eBay or wherever I get them and restoring them. However, that is not today's video. Today's video is, like I said, the first in maybe series where I'm gonna take you through all of my cameras slowly um, by brand. So today we're gonna start with my Polaroids, but I also have um, like Kodak brownie cameras, like that whole series, not the whole series, but I have a lot of brownie cameras. And then I've also got some like Sony technology that would be fun to show you. They're not cameras per se, um, but it's I collect vintage technology with a focus on cameras. So right now I'm just gonna take you through all of my Polaroid cameras and tell you a little bit about them, tell you about how I restored them a little bit in case someone's interested in restoring cameras. So starting with the oldest, we'll work our way to the newest. And I do not have every camera, but I don't have every year, um, but I am working on that. It is like a goal of mine to have a camera from every decade and right now I have from the 30s to the early 2000s but they're not all the same brand so it'd be fun to have one like a Polaroid from every decade but anyways I digress let's start with the oldest camera here the oldest camera ironically might be my best condition camera this is the Polaroid Land Camera Model 95. Now, the Land Camera here, it has these, wow, it has these billows here, and it's like an accordion style thing. Um, you could shoot in multiple directions if you wanted to, um, but basically this thing collapses into itself and closes up and becomes flat. Um, but I'm not gonna close it up because it's really dusty and I don't want all that dust to get stuck up in there. But the viewfinder flips up, which is this little thing in the jig. There's a little thing on the back here and you would look through it and see what you're gonna take a picture of. Um, and then to load, the film would be in this compartment and it opens up pulling that little thing and then all of the instructions are on the inside and the film loads into there and then you close it and lock it. This camera being not my oldest camera but my oldest Polaroid is from 1948. Moving on to camera number two. This one is from 1961 and it is right here behind me. Now this one is not in as good of condition but my dad gave this to me and it was one of the first cameras I ever got in my collection so it's really special. Um, it's closed because it's not that good at opening and closing but it does do the same accordion thing just this way um, as the first one I showed you. Um, once again has the leather handle, leather um, outer. This is plastic and this is called the Polaroid land camera model J66. It has this little knob, I don't know if you can see, but there's a little red dot and you turn that to uh, 
change your exposure levels, which is pretty cool. The button to shoot is right there. Once again, we have the viewfinder, except this time it goes the other way. The other camera, it opens that way. This one opens towards you. Um, I think what's super cool about this one, it does, it opens the exact same way as the other one does as well. But what's really cool is it still has the plastic cover on its uh, original instructions. And I just think that's pretty cool, but she's a little rusty. I've got some ideas on how to um, mess with that, but as of now, I have not attempted rust removal on any of my cameras. I just clean the outsides and what I can do to like prevent more rust from showing, but that is, the J66. Camera number three. Now this camera I got in a small antique shop in um, a little coastal town and I got it with my dad while we were there. And it's the first camera that I've found in person at a thrift store. And I was so excited about it. It's such a weird little camera. It's not my favorite, but it's funky and <laughs> I like it for that. This camera is from 1972. It is called the Polaroid Square Shooter 2 and it's a land camera as well like as those other two and as the title suggests it shoots in square photos. Um, right here on this little area there would be a flash cube that you would attach and it would twist and you would get multiple flashes out of it as opposed to having to just do one um this one when it comes to having restored it's still kind of gross looking and i need to get some goo gone or something to get that sticker off but i just used isopropyl alcohol on it it's got this funky handle which was like a big deal back then but yeah, i don't know <laughs> it is what it is but it's a weird little looking camera and I just like how strange it is. Like it doesn't look like the other Polaroids to me. It just looks funky. And I'm not gonna put my eye on this eyepiece because I haven't fully cleaned out this camera and I just don't trust it. I have problems with, you know, 50 year old eye grease from strangers. So I just don't trust her yet. But that is the Polaroid Square Shooter 2 from 1972. Remaining in the 70s, but now flashing forward five years, we have kind of the uh, iconic Polaroid camera. And let me tell you, I tried very hard to get my hands on this one. It was a process. You can see her lurking in the background over here. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> this is the Polaroid One Step from 1977. I think this one's the most iconic because it has the iconic Polaroid stripe. However, I think when people draw Polaroids, they tend to do a combination of the one step and the impulse because a lot of times they'll draw it with a little um, like eyepiece above it, like for the flash, and that's the wrong combination because the impulse doesn't have the stripe, but I digress. This camera is like the iconic camera and this goes into when we're talking instant, like instant film. Um, so things like, you know, this is the kind of iconic Polaroid picture. Those cameras do not shoot these. This is an instant film. It comes in a cartridge, you put it in here. Now, fun fact about these cameras, if you're brand new to the Polaroid world, um, once you get into these kind of shooters, they come with a film cartridge and the cartridge has a battery in it. So there's no place to put a battery in here. Um, the cartridge literally just comes with it. So if you don't use your film within a period of time and you've got it in the camera, your film pack will die and you won't be able to shoot pictures because the battery died. This camera uses SX70 film, which kind of kickstarted this whole new era of photography and art with photography because this particular film type when it develops and it comes out you have to be really careful not to touch the picture part because it there's like a chemical goo in there and people would take pictures and let them start developing and then they would take like a toothpick or a fine pointed thing their finger whatever and they would smear the photo i'll put some pictures up some examples um, and credit the artist when I do because it's pretty cool to me. Um, but it was kind of like Photoshop in a way, but they would like move the pigments and change the image because the film would do that. And I just think that's really interesting. Um, 
this kind that I was showing you as an example, this is not SX70, this is um, Polaroid 600 film. So it's used with like 600 type cameras, <laughs> duh. But um, it would look like this. The film would just be, this image part would be malleable essentially. But I'm really happy to have this one. It was a long battle to receive this camera, but it was awesome and I love it because it's like the iconic Polaroid. All right, we're getting on to the last three. On to the last three of cameras. Not like this is exciting, unless you're just watching this and you're not excited, in which case I don't know why you're still here, but... My next camera we have here is from 1981. This camera is kind of a funky one. Here we have the Polaroid Sun 660 autofocus version. So they made a few different iterations of this camera. In particular, um, as I said, it's from 1981. This is the flash right here. This, <laughs> you can see yourself, this shiny doohickey is meant to help with the autofocus and making the, um, excuse me, making the photos have a nice coloring to them. This little lever here is how you adjust the light, the lightness or darkness, as they say on these cameras sometimes, um, otherwise known as the exposure level. And mine does not have the little rubberized knob <laughs> that the rest of them do. It came off at some point in this camera's life, um, but it still works. I have put film into it and it works. I need to clean out its little um, camera number there, but. Um, essentially, there's this button under here where you could press and um, it would flash the camera. And for storage purposes, this camera closes like this. And this is its shutter. Um, it doesn't really like the work, it's kind of broken. And to put film into it, just like the uh, one step, it opens. So this one, as you can see, says right there, it uses 600 film. There's nothing much exciting to say about this one. It just looks kind of cool. And I think it's cool that it opens up like this and the flash bar is already attached to it, but it's just a cool one. All right, second to last, we have my working Polaroid. Now I have two of these. Um, I don't know where the other one is at the moment. It's a bit of a problem, but anywho. I have two of these that work. One of them was given to me by my grandma on my mom's side, and one was given to me by my dad around the same time he gave me that one. And this is the camera I was saying always gets mixed up with the uh, one step because they tend to put this little knob on the picture of the one step. This camera currently has film in it, as you can see, because the light's on, so I'm not gonna leave that open because I don't wanna run my film out. And I'm not gonna open this either because that would expose my film but this is called the Polaroid Impulse. On the top here, there's a lever that you pull um, depending on how far away you are, and it says how many pictures you have. Right now it says two, which means that this is actually an empty cartridge because um, current film is thicker than the old film used to be, so they can't fit 10 photos in each cartridge because they can't change the cartridge size. So they can only fit eight photos per cartridge. So if it says two, it means you're out because it's counting down from 10. But anyways, um, this camera is great. It's pretty cool. It's the one that took this photo right here. But I don't know, I just think it's great. It's a fun little, little guy. It still has this strap and everything on it, but that is the Polaroid Impulse from 19. 88. And last but not least, we have the camera that is as old as I am. I call this camera the vacuum camera because when it's closed like this, it kind of looks like a little robot vacuum to me. I don't know why, like I just feel like it goes vroom and like suck up things. But this camera was made in 2003. Um, and it's got a 100 millimeter lens, it's got a focus range of three feet, and it's a little bit different in the way that film is loaded because the film button is right there and it just opens up. It also uses 600 film, as it says right there. It's weird, like it's got a timer on it, which is different, and it's got a flash on it, 
and I'm assuming this is your digital count, which is also interesting because that's just weird to me. Um, and I'm assuming this little beeper button thing, dookie, light, whatever that's called, <laughs> is what would flash if you're gonna do a timer. I haven't tested this one to see if it works, but I don't know, it's just a funky little camera. Like, can you just imagine? And for some reason, the strap is fully on the side. Like, <laughs> I don't know why that is either, because it's not big enough to go on your head. The other ones are, like, you can put them around your neck, but this one, I guess, is just, like, for your wrist. But, I don't know, it's just a weird camera, like, <laughs> it's so funny looking to me, but I like it a lot, it's fun. And this is my newest Polaroid in terms of age. So, I'll show you my oldest Polaroid to my newest, because I just think that's a cool development in the world of Polaroid cameras. We went from stuff like this with the big old billows to something like this that shoot, shoots instant photos. Of course they have to be developed, but they're pretty much instant photos. Whereas this one would shoot on roll film and like you'd have to do the whole, whole process. I just think that's cool. My favorite one of all of them is either it's the one I just showed you, the brown one. Either the brown one, just because it's like really cool aesthetically, or this one as well, it's really awesome to look at. Those aren't my favorites out of my whole collection, but those are my favorites in the Polaroid aspect of the collection. Things like that little one I showed you over here, um, that's like a brownie camera and they make a ton of them. So I have a bunch of those now. Um, if you'd like to see a video on those, I can tell you a little bit about them as well because they're fun and they're all so different but similar in certain ways but they're all just so weird and <laughs> I just like them like that's a brownie camera but this is also a brownie camera <laughs> this is so weird there's one behind me that that's a brownie camera that's not she's special but yeah if you liked this video hit the like button down below share it with somebody if you've got a camera enthusiast or you're just interested in cameras leave a comment down below tell me which one was your favorite and if you would like to see the next uh video in this little series um leave that down there too and i would love to hear any feedback you have thank you so so much for watching this video and i will see you hopefully in the next one peace